So Brock said uh, at his combine that Donovan McNabb was the guy. That, that it was very clear just being felt there it, that you could just yeah. tell he was kind of the star where everybody else was trying to be like that. That he did all those things you were just talking about um, sort of in the downtime. Who Who had that vibe to you this year? Yeah, so like last year, I would say C.J. Stroud and Will Levis knocked it out of the park for me, like in in those ways. Those like two guys, mm-hmm. as an example, like high profile guys. Uh, a guy in my group last year that knocked it out of the park for me, like on the intangible side, also was Jake Bobo. You know, like so, like I don't know if he ran well, I don't know if he did well, but I was just, I just remember leaving there being like, this dude's awesome. There were a couple of guys like that. This year for me, like the list tripled. It was like, I mean, J.J. McCarthy was great. Drake May was off the charts awesome. Um, Bo Nix, you know, like, there, there were just, like, some great guys. There, there was, uh, um, you know, even in the wide receiver room, Lad McConkey uh, for Georgia, uh, this kid A.D. Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell from Texas, wide receiver, like, young, just effortless. Uh, I had a guy named Xavier Leggett, I think is how I say his name. I don't know how I say his name, but I, I know I, I would know how to throw him the ball. He was the guy everyone was comparing to DK Metcalf. <laughs> they were like, he's from South Carolina. They're like, this is like, this guy's the closest thing we've seen to DK Metcalf. And so I had my eyes on him. He was in my group and he was, he was as advertised. Like there, there was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, this year there were a lot of guys that didn't work out, you know, like, Marvin Harrison didn't even stay. Uh, Jaden Daniels from LSU didn't even stay. He just, like, up and bounced one day. You know, like, so there were some people that, like, you know, I don't know how teams are going to react to some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. I know I wouldn't react to it favorably. But uh, but overall, I think guys helped, them, helped themselves. And if I had to pick it, like, for example, if I had to pick at the top of the draft, I really did like Drake May a lot. Really did. Uh, Matt Hassel back here with us for just a couple more minutes. Matt, it was fun for me. You talk about coaching, you know, your son and, and Henry this this last year of his high school season. It was fun for me to bring Titus to both the Civil War and the Apple Cup back to back days. And we actually he sat in the production meeting with Bo Nix, and I echo everything you said. Like that is just a grown man, such a mature, awesome guy. Took so much time. And then the following day, we were on the field, and he got to feel and sense and hear Michael Penix throw football and he was just Mm, like wow I mean that thing comes out of his hand I did a couple of his games this year it just comes out differently Rich Eisen we got a bunch of sound on our sound sheet today just talking about that as well I'm curious at field level you've watched guys for 20 years you were watching Brett Favre throw a football back in the late 90s when he was in his absolute prime does Penix throw it about as good as anybody you've seen in person he was great he was great like the velocity the horsepower throwing football tight spiral in a dome. Like it was as advertised him and Joe Milton probably have the two strong Joe Milton's from Tennessee Mm -hmm. probably have the two strongest arms that I saw guys throw the, the thing I would caution though, like just, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I grew up in kind of like that Mike Holmgren era of like the ball should not touch the ground if there's not a defender. And you know, there's a lot of long foul balls, a lot of second and 10 for the whole Mm -hmm. group, Mm -hmm. you know, and like, even on the broadcast, I hear people saying like, wow, what an amazing throw, what an amazing spiral. It's like, and I, I don't know why I just like the way maybe I'm trained as a actual player. I'm like, that's second and 10. Like, what are we talking about? (laughs) You know, like, what are we, what are we cheering on here? Like, Mm -hmm. what are we doing? You know, so like in, in the combines imperfect, the routes are all over the place. The scouts this year had routes that don't exist, that they were running. Um, they weren't running traditional routes all the time, but, but no, to, to your point, Michael Penix, I think what I thought he was great. What I think some people, and I don't think this is right, but I just think it's true. Some people in the NFL struggle with left handers. Mm. It's like the weirdest thing. So- yeah. And, you know, You're I was there for the inform. Yeah, I was, I know. And I was there for the informal interviews. The Detroit lions were doing an in- informal interview with Michael Penix. And who are the two people talking? It's Mark Brunel and, and it's Michael Penix. And I, I walk up to him like, Hey, what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that it's harder to be a left-hander. And they kind of gave each other like this look and started laughing. Like, Hey man, it's kind of true. 
you know, but he he was he was as advertised. Uh, I think he's a great player. Obviously, he had a he had an an amazing year uh, this year. Someone whoever gets him is going to get a really really good player. Can you help me on JJ McCarthy a little bit? I, he, I'm kind of fascinated by him, and I don't entirely know what to think about him. I didn't watch a ton of him this year, and Joel Klatt made fun of me because I didn't watch the Ohio State game. But then I saw him in the two playoff games and wasn't like wildly impressed with his you know throwing from the pocket. You know what's he going to do on third and twelve in the NFL? And then, you know, he seems like the ultimate leader and, and certainly makes plays with his legs. What were your takeaways on JJ? He's in, his, his personality is infectious, contagious. You know, he brings energy to everything that he does. Some quarterbacks can be a little bit like energy vampires. He's the polar opposite. He's like, he's just awesome that way. Uh, he does not have that presence that maybe some other guys have where you walk in the room and you're like, whoa, like you're, you're six foot five and a half and you're just built like a first round pick. Like you're a first rounder. He doesn't have that. He, um, but he has something else that's special and it's easy to see why Jim Harbaugh and his teammates uh, love him so much. It's easy to see why he was so successful, but, but no, like if you put him side to side throwing with Michael Penix, like you're going to come away feeling like, wow, Michael Penix has got, um, you know, he's got Nolan Ryan type velocity. Uh, some of these other guys, you don't, you don't necessarily get that feeling, but I would say that there's definitely conversations that were happening at the combine when people were talking about Brock Purdy. And they were like, hey, you know, we're we're valuing how like how many miles per hour someone can throw the football. But like, is that really what we should be valuing? And I think there's a group of guys this year that have played a lot of football. And when you go back to a guy like Brock Purdy, he had 41 starts at Iowa State. There's some guys here because of COVID and because of other reasons. They've played a lot of football. And so I just think that that's going to be someone is going to value sort of the intangibles, the experience, who trained you in college over some of the other measurables that you get at the combine. And and I do think someone will really like JJ McCarthy. Yeah. Um but in terms of the eye test, he's you know, he's probably not beating out a guy like Joe Milton or Drake May. Um and that's gonna be okay to somebody. <laughs> 